Entonces. Ahora sí. It's working now. Hola, hola. Finally. Hey, hey, everybody. It's finally working. Celebration. The cat is celebrating also. This is what is everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Lala. Thank you for coming. And thank you, everybody who's joining us. Um, apparently, too many people are trying to do live things on Instagram at the same time. Um, so that's why we had all those technical problems. But I'm very happy we were able to do it. Um, I'm happy you can join me and Gala and Juarez to this Instagram live. So, uh, Gala, you want to tell us? A little bit about yep. your work. I know you were trying to show some videos. Uh, Gala prepared these beautiful videos where she's having like mostly female voices uh, describing her work. And I think it would be beautiful if we managed to share that. Let's try to do that. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, thanks to you for coming to my studio. I don't know if you want some tea. I made chipas. Well, if you want, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I would love something. I'm going to have some coffee if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. Okay. Um, so I'm not in my studio. I'm actually <laughs> in my living room in my house in San Jose, Costa Rica. You know, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the situation here. It's not so bad, uh, mm -hmm. we think, because the government don't say much. But I think mm -hmm. the can, they are making things to handle the situation very good. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's, it's different here because uh, Costa Rica doesn't have an army from the 40s. So we don't have even the juridical like, tools to make like this quarantine mandatory or something like that. So it's different from the rest of the world, at least different from Argentina or Peru. You know, like there is this mandatory quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anyway, I have the enormous privilege to be in my house and taking care of myself in this way that not much people have you now. Mm -hmm. And also I feel a little bit sad about everything that is happening right now. And I promise not to cry, but may maybe I will cry a little bit. In in this conversation, I will make my best effort not to cry, but uh, the situation... We all want to cry. We're all yeah. crying. <laughs> we all have family away. To... <laughs> I will and... try not to cry so much. Okay, and also yes. thank you to you and to Diana and to everybody there in the American society to make this work and to maintain the situation like with some energy. There is some friend of mind that they are saying that the best thing is like cut everything and not produce anything and just be chill for a while and stop with these uh, massive production of things and and this capitalism like way of thinking like you have to like be productive all the time but I also have yeah. friends who say you must work because you know it's a way to to make something with all this feeling that that we have so I don't know, it's like, which one do I choose? No, like, what, what is this time that we live in? And, and what is what happened now with the world? Like, it's crazy, you know? Absolutely. And, and do we live now in all of us in queer times? Like this strange time that we are forced to live? But at least we are living, there is something, right? Yes. So I'm going to try to show you the videos. I don't know why it's not so well working right now. This is my, my home. Uh, yeah. Well, we're having all these different technological problems, but I think that at least we're I don't know if trying and we're talking enough. and sharing our feelings. Yeah, I don't know. Is this, it worked before. So that everybody. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. Let me Another way to do it is you can like just put the video and film the video with mm -hmm. your own telephone. It'll yeah. be better than we than that could work. And also so that everybody knows we are working so that we can upload some of like Gala's videos, share share them from her user afterwards. 
So if you miss one of them or if you don't see it in great quality, don't worry, we're going to be sharing these um, beautiful videos a little bit after also. Super. Mm -hmm. I'm searching for it. Oh, da, da, da. oh my God, all these technical problems. Don't worry. I mean, we're all... Oh, so sorry. Nope. And we are back from the nightmare. Okay. People are saying that they can see us, so that's good. <laughs> I can actually try to show them myself, I think. If Most you of want our work is done. I, 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 I can find the I know, so but I actually, I, I'm sharing it on your computer. But do you want me to show it or do you want to show it? I don't know. I will try it, right? Okay, let's try. What is the yourself. worst thing that could happen today? Nothing. Okay. Well, I think the worst thing that could happen is a pandemic, and that's already happening. <laughs> well, the important but, thing is the, uh, the the voices on the video. I, this is the part yes. that I, I'm worried about, like the, the the sound. The voices sound great. The sound is, is, is actually looking great. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of my work is intrinsically linked to speculative fabulation, science fiction, and institutional criticism. Some of my recent projects include... Algunas son fuertes en lugares rotos. Some are strong in the broken places. Ritmo Aéreo is based on the anonymous book by the Caribbean writer, educator, and activist Elvali Bernard, published in Costa Rica in 1982. The project highlights the tensions between local cultural memory and the untold stories of regional migration as a way to oppose amnesia, usually implemented by government policies. Does atrocity need a body? Well, this is the first part that I will show you right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you want, we can talk a little bit about this. I would love um, to. The thing is, like, when you asked me to make this, like, a studio visit, I was thinking, oh, my God, this is not the time for me to explain my work. It was very difficult to do that. But then I realized that it was a good moment or a good idea to ask for friends and all-time collaborator to, I don't know, try to sing with me. So I send it like the text and they send me like audio files on WhatsApp and I make the video with that, that audio. So it was like very beautiful because it gave me an opportunity to connect with them and also to like, not to talk only by myself, like to talk about me and I and all the time like this, I can talk about we now. Now we can talk about us, mm -hmm. let's say group or something like that. So in this video, the voices were from uh, the uh, Puerto Rican curator Marina Reyes Franco mm -hmm. and the visual Costa Rican artist Ingrid Cordero. Mm -hmm. um, and the video shows a little bit about some project. Uh, one of them is Ritmo Héroe. It's a crazy mm -hmm. story, you know, like because when I moved to Costa Rica, I didn't know anything about Central American history, not like art history, even any history, like social history, cultural history. So I started to read about it. You know? And so I found this super hippie book that it was right in many voices, like they say, like, we have to make this pan historical book, and they, they mix it, everything, and it was very confused to read, but in that book I found about this Eulalia Bernard, who mm -hmm. is, uh, like, a beautiful poet and activist and teacher, and she also produced TV shows, and she was the cultural diplomat from for Costa Rica in Jamaica. So this beautiful woman that she's still alive, um, mm -hmm. is not so good that she's in, in, in a cell. I don't know how to say it. She's in a house for old people. Mm -hmm. yeah. then, you know, like, so how can I relate to this kind of work that is, was made from a context that I don't know, 
and also you know like i i can deal directly with the author because she's not well and i couldn't like have a proper conversation with her because she's not remember things and all this kind of stuff so i try to to work with the family and that worked very well so they give me the permits to like make something like illustration of all of the poems of this book Prit Moerva um, mm-hmm. and it was amazing because i i tried to i don't know to find her like i don't know conversations and things that i don't know some recorder or, or recordings of her reading or something like that but it was very difficult to find so i went to the Republic, the Dominican Republic, and there I made this exhibition. And for the exhibition, it was very important that the poetry just appears in some way. So I asked someone to read the poems, and then you enter to the exhibition, and you can hear it, like, from all over the space, you know. You can see the paintings and or the mobiles or whatever it was, and then you can, like, um have the the sense of this poetry like in the air or something like that you know like um i have a, a one small piece of of her poetry here i really recommend that if you have a chance you search for eulalia bernar and i don't know try to to find her because she's a, she's very impressive and she's almost unknown so mm-hmm. it's very important like if you if you can do that it would be perfect for the world and this poem say like this bilingual economy bono fica cafe bono fica caña mino si no where de bono fica cacao es que them say de gente cacao no necesita for peseta only the gente from the meseta So the man in the Banco Central think of we like animal. What a democracy is that? Todo para unos, nothing for todos. And we, tienen no diputado. We, cacao man, what a democratic land. And, and she write this on, of course, it's not Spanish, it's not English, it's Creole from Costa Rica. They, they call it Limonense Creole. And it's like this, freedom, you know, like talking about things and stuff and, and beautiful days in the beach and in the way mm-hmm. of these people can survive making stuff and, and things. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's interesting what you're saying because, you know, what you're talking about an artist that is using two languages or kind of like this being well, no? like passage in between cultures and she has like this very multicultural but that's also your situation i feel like something that happens to a lot of uh immigrant artists and i found this in my own research in my doctoral research like migrant artists i mean um of course the situations are different according to the case but is that especially young ones when they're arriving to a new context are trying to 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 find reference in of, of not only reference of the culture that are arriving to like in your case you know this arrival to the caribbean region and this trying to understand this completely new context that you were tra- teletransported to you know through your personal experience but also um you know reference like female reference of like there is an, an artist in argentina nagallardo which we both know and uh, that also mm-hmm. does work about like working with um you know a uh, female reference uh you know or female people of older age that have more experience about life and how to like how to learn to grow all together that's her motto and i think that's uh, fascinating but this is also that you see in all sort of artists you see it in like the artists in the 1970s like conceptualist latin american artists arriving to the city and i think that's um that's fascinating you know even if you come and especially in the context so i don't know if you want to show the other video because yeah, i don't want to take too down. much time let's yeah. do that let's go fast this time okay this is no this problem is... we're not going to rush it yeah okay this is the first one i don't want that one again 
Mask in Mundo, There is Only One World is a collaboration with Costa Rican artist Martin Robinson. The elements of this installation evoke the dynamics of disassembly and reassembly of the body, fissures, displacements, and production of subjectivity. It is composed of multiple hanging fragments, elastic elements, and mobiles, which includes various human body parts. No tengo fuerzas para rendirme. I don't have the strength to surrender. Explore the construction of a new human model through physical manipulation of digital animations and 3D renders. The pieces were produced on the basis of a combination of images that reflect fetishes and desires. Taking the form of fabric collages and hanging textiles, the project enables the formation of multiple genus and hybridizations between humans, animals, and microorganisms, furthering a new set of association and possibilities that challenges and undoes the normative social subject. Well, they make that that at the strange zoom, right? Like go <laughs> going back. Uh, I don't know why that is happening. You can hear something. No, we could hear perfectly. I mean, yeah. and, and I have, I have colleagues checking on other lines, and everybody can hear very clear. Um, the video might have been a little bit blurry, but as I said before, and I repeat it in case we have new like listeners or viewers. We will be uploading these videos that Gala is sharing with us. Um, I mean, she's going to be uploading them to her account, and we're going to share them in our account so people can see them after. Um, and also, you can see some images of her work in the post that we put this morning, including like 10 photos of her work. Um, but um, I don't know if you want to tell us a little bit about these like eerie subjects that you create, these like kind of phantoms. Yeah. Well. <laughs> The first project was like a collaboration with the Costa Rican artist mm -hmm. Martin Robinson. He's mm -hmm. also great. If you don't follow him, this is your chance. Go, mm -hmm. go and follow Martin Robinson. And you know, like we work together in in different countries, so we like we we only can, could see like the exhibition when when it was all like there hanging there. You know, like. I, I didn't know what pieces he would show, and, and he also didn't know what I'm going to show there as well. So it was a process to build this together, and it was very interesting. And from the other project, um, No Tengo Fuerzas Para Rendirme, I Don't Have the Strength to Surrender. It's a political phrase that you must know because it's from Argentina. And it's a, something that, uh, you know, like, you you can relate because it's like the history of the country that being in a in a in a loop of crisis all the time, you know, that like going mm -hmm. from the loop of crisis over and over again, and this seems like, okay, I don't even have the strength to to surrender, you know, like absolutely. Um, and then you know, like start this process to understand why I was doing here in Central America, you not know, doing. Well, what can I do here? I'm not from here. I'm I'm a foreign, but also I I can understand the cultural codes of the country because we speak the same language and we have many things in, in common. And and well, I don't know what happened, but it was like this strange election between mm -hmm. a really conservative and horrible politician from the like mm -hmm. the most evangelic um, and like terrible um, small mind <laughs> like we can say like that and this other guy it was a little bit better like a lot better anyway because it not it was not evangelic at least and it was like this like very very on point like you know like this election it was super super like uh, like a fight you know you know you don't know who will win until the end and we are all very afraid because you know like who is going to win this election and who is going to govern this beautiful and natural country it was like really something that it was in the heart of everybody so i started to make this collage with fabrics and it's like 3d but i i don't made it you know like i just don't 3d from from the web and then you know because i like to to work with this material that someone else create and someone else uh, put like the desire of the of the perfect human body or, or something like that so i make this like 
politician or ministers of this uh, country like the like really following the lines of what it it would happen here but making like another possibility for that you know making mm -hmm. a, a possibility to make something else and finally like the horrible guy didn't want so that's that's cool because it's It was like the opening of the exhibition was the same day that the election, and it was like we are looking at each other and say what will happen, and finally yeah. something good happened that this guy didn't want. So that's it, you know. It's a way to relate with the context and to propose something. Just, just not only criticize the the situation, but also give another version of it. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel that the materials that you choose relate to this idea of like this idea of resistance? I mean, I, I feel like there's at least a poetic resemblance in between the idea of using this transparency, this idea of a present that is kind of like a present but it's there all the time, with like this title of like you know, we kind of like but resist. Yeah, and and, and one thing is like this material were made to be digital, you know, that to to belong mm -hmm. to this world. Of the of the digital world, and then when you like just print it out in fabric, you you, you are taking something from a different world and introducing to this world, and and they become of something strange because they are like culture because you know like when they hang they have like this 3 D dimension and you can like go around. Yeah, at, at let me actually show it to the people. The, yeah, you can Maybe see the background. See, for So, and also they are floating, and in the photos you can see, but they move, you know, like because they are so fragile and so yeah. soft, and and they float, so they move like every 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 air, every little wind that passes just moves the things through, and and you can see not only the context, also you can see the movement as well. Yes, and it's kind of amazing because what happens with these works is that in the typical context, our world context of an art opening, which is when I recently saw them in person in Mexico, this type of works that Gala does, like they, they in the distance, like they melt with the people in the audience and you start like confusing the artwork with the people and in a way it almost becomes like an institutional critique of the situation of the opening. So that's pretty spectacular about them. And they're also like, I mean, there's something almost like a um, Latin American political review of Calder, if you want. I mean, Calder, who is an artist that was much more political than people tend to think. Um, so I think that's um, interesting. Calder had a very active political activist, and even though his work was very different. Um, but, um, I mean, how do you feel about this idea of using the mobile? You know, you use so much like this idea of the hanging thing, the mobile. Well, like. I don't know where it started, you know, like, I don't have really a, a media or a theme for, for projects, you know, like I'm, mm. I'm making things all the time and I, I, I don't, I don't pass many time, like uh, looking at the, at the things I've done and, and seeing what is, why I did that or that, but. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It started like um, 10 years ago, you know. I started to like paint these, um, you know, these curtains. Like, oh, I don't know how I'm saying right. Las cortinas del baño? I don't know, shower curtains. Yeah, like shower curtains. Shower yeah, curtains, that's exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. And, and I started to, to paint that. And I was hanging this and make like spaces, you know. like they, I used that for make like imaginary walls or to make like walls mm -hmm. with paper with uh, like papel mache paper so i start mm -hmm. for me it started to like to separate uh, architecture and spaces with these walls they were very fragile as well um, but i like the idea that, that i could use this big piece of material and divide things and from mm -hmm. then you know like it start naturally to to become other things. Then I start to make lamps with like the, mm -hmm. um, the garbage of um, productions, like cinema productions and TV st uh, stations and all these kind of things that they used to put um, mm -hmm. the to give a color to the light. You know, like the, yeah. you have this 
blue and um, violet colors and you change the light and you give some more dramatic look or whatever. And I start to use that like, like lamps. I, I just put things uh, on that and then mm -hmm. the, the, this, this color thing, I make lamps and put a light on, on inside of that. Like, like this lamp, you know, like this hanging lamp. Yeah. That I have many yeah. of them. It's cool. Light bulbs. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then the, it was like something uh, very beautiful because they have like these colors but also it was a material that was used for a particular reason. So I, I love to see that happen again, like the transformation of the material that it was supposed to use, be used for other stuff, for, to make like, uh, to manipulate the observer to do some things. And I will use it this, like just create atmosphere, but in a, in a completely different way. Okay, that is great. I think this is fascinating. You want to show the other video? Yes, let's go to that. This is what's the profile. So, this is the. La, la, la. Alianzas de la Resistencia. Resistance Alliances adopts the form of a board game to explore the social history of feminism in Latin America, recounting moments in history usually emitted by patriarchal culture means invoking the strength and power of representation by playing a game that aims to overthrow the normalized forms of violence against women. Well, uh, one thing that I must say before everything, anything, is like I, I didn't mention the voices of the previous video, and I will do it right now. <laughs> That's it, like, no problem. Uh, the curator Gaby Cepeda from Mexico, and Daniela Morales from Costa Rica. So, and the last one, it was from Maggie Testoni from Argentina, that she's the director now of the Paraguay Printed Art Fair that I used to run. So mm -hmm. thank you, my friends, for uh, giving me your voices for the video. And about the project that we just saw, it was like, um, it's a project that I, I actually, I made a, a small version before I made this big version. Um, it was a dream for me to be able to make this big version because I, I always always have it in my mind to make it uh, the bigger version, but then it was like no money to do that. And mm -hmm. so I conform myself with the small version like for two or three years. And then um, CIFO gave me this and opportunity to make the 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 game in, in the real side that I was I was wanted to do. And it's important for me because it's a it's a history of um, Latin American feminist struggles. And it, it was important for me also that it, you can like actually uh, play it and you can feel in your own body and you know like, oh no, the Mirabal sisters, like they were killed, blah, blah, blah. And so you go, you go back in the squares or, or maybe something good happened and you can go up in the game. And so you can like almost feel that mm -hmm. history is, is, is on you. you know? you are playing the history and in, in a way that, that you can not only be like, a, like, a, like a being like just only watching the data and you know, like have to be, you can like travel it and with your own body and you can experiment history and process. And mm -hmm. this extraordinary, a fight of these strong women, you know, like I didn't know yeah. much about it and I have to research a lot to make this possible. And it was really interesting to do that. And also like um, very moving because all this genealogy of, of super strong women that, you know, like make your life possible to them. Even if, if it's terrible to be a woman in Latin America, because they're killing mm -hmm. us all the time. You know, it's, it's good to understand that it's, you are not alone in, in the world and you're not alone, not only now, you are not alone. You were not alone in the past and you will not be alone in the future. If there is a future, you will be like, um, you will have this genealogy, like stand it with you and give you the strength and, and inspiration to, to continue ongoing and, and doing stuff. 
I think it's very important what you're saying also because it has a double effect. On the one side, it allows, I mean, a lot has been discussed in the last years. I mean, maybe in the last year, but even in the last uh, few years, if you want to be generous about like the new trend of feminism in Latin America. And I feel like I've heard from certain intellectuals and from certain people, like especially here in the U.S., a certain paternalistic, like, um, view, like, oh, finally, they're discovering identity politics in Latin America, which in a way is true. It is true that we didn't used to focus so much on, like, like you know, like, like, like political fights through the angle of identity politics, because we had a very different history about that, and a very different history of, like, militancy and activism in the Americas. But on the other hand, I feel like it's completely, like, missing the point, and it's also missing the history of what happened before. And I feel that um, it has a double effect, which is what I said at the beginning, because I feel like this is a history that we don't know in Latin America about the militancy that happened in our own countries. I mean, the militancy that happened in the region and the militancy that happened uh, in communication between different countries in the region. And I feel like it's very important that, you know, through this piece, you brought it, you know, you are building a visual history of something that I mean, has been historicized, but it's not like widely known. So I think that's very important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go to another video because you said sure. pretty good. And <laughs> I don't want to. Ah, we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Should would be nice to uh, uh, let people. Go. Yes, but we're going to see all these videos are beautiful. Okay. Also, since 2008, I've participated in the creation of independent platforms, institutional experiments, and cooperative projects based in Latin America. Some of the projects I've been involved in are Paraguay Printed Art Fair, co-organized with the Argentinian curator Sofia Duhon. Paraguay is a place for the exchange and circulation of independent publications. This project is still continuous, now under the directorship of Maggie Testoni. Another project is Nuevo Museo Energía de Arte Contemporáneo, co-funded with Puerto Rican curator Maria Reyes Franco in Buenos Aires in 2010. This museum, commonly known as La N, proposes a critical revision of the parameters and a hegemonic model of the institution as such. In that sense, La N is an open and expansive museum that can be presented in different forms it's not nice like to hear all this accent. Like Ana Luisa, the first voice that we hear is just like this Brazilian sweet voice. No? She's like the founder and the director of the Feria Tijuana de Arte Impreso. Um, so she's mm -hmm. super strong and, and beautiful. And the other one is like this Puerto Rican sound, you know, like Cristina Nunez, this architect that she's also amazing. But you can hear like the different accent also mine right <laughs> but anyway like um well this project is, for, is completely different thing all the the other things and stuff that i showed today it's like mm -hmm. uh being the director of um, publication alpha and being like co-founder and active member of la n there was like a museum that happened a physical space until 2000 and uh, yes, 18, yeah, 18. So, mm -hmm. you know, like for me, it started this kind of project of being a curator because in 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 the way that, that is what I am also, um, in a very mm -hmm. natural way, you know, like I was not thinking, oh, okay, I will be a curator now. Or this, this do that, I, I will become a curator. No, it was just a process. And I start one day with the with the feeling that I was not well, watching what I want to see, like the exhibition that I was doing, or, or 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 my friends were doing, or or the city were doing. Like I don't know, everybody was doing something that I didn't want to see. So I start to to think myself, like, okay, I I need to do something because I don't know, no, it's not, I don't know, it's not something that I. Uh, that I want like this happen again and again, the same kind of exhibition, the same no taking risk exhibition, the same no political exhibition. 
So with this group of amazing curators and art historians, like there is uh, Santiago Villanueva, Sofia Duron, who was here a moment ago. Hi, Sofia, I miss you. And of course, Marina, uh, you know, like we start to, to try to be very, very institutional. Like it was so strange because our space was like super small and we don't have any budget at all. And it was all like, I don't know how they, how we managed to, to do all this stuff that we, that yeah, we do. if you don't mind, if you don't mind me correcting you or just like making an important clarification to the audiences, I mean, mm -hmm. La N had a tiny space and a tiny budget, but it became the most important like contemporary art center in Buenos Aires in two seconds, like that. I remember I moved out, I moved to New York around the time that La N was starting to become famous and to explode. And I remember uh, like, I mean, all of us knew what La N was even, I mean, I must say at the time I was more of a nerdy, um, art historian, and I was not so much in touch with the contemporary art scene as maybe I am now, you know? I was like more focused on like, you know, my studies, and I was definitely not part of the cool art scene of Buenos Aires. But I knew about La Ene, and so did all my friends who were like, you know, people interested in arts, but that were not like the cool, like part of like the cool art scene, you know? Like the art scene is always like a cool scene where you'll have people from different backgrounds and things, and they might hear about the latest phenomena. La N went beyond that, you know, and I think it went beyond anything. That, like, I think it, I mean, if we think about it, I mean, this might sound big, but it was the most important space and cultural phenomena that happened in Buenos Aires since Veche de Felicidad. And I'm not sure there has been a new space that had that role, you know, and La N was also part of this, like, special space, like Patio del Liceo, where a lot of, like, other independent spaces took place. So, I mean, so you did have a base, and a very important one, even an international base. I was a part of it. <laughs> yes, thank you. You are so kind, but yeah, almost, I think... No, I mean, it's okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry about my stool <laughs> over here. Oh, <laughs> I, no. I have a stool. What is yeah, no. you have an international base. <laughs> There's also okay. a dog. You have a whole international oh, no, base of fans so of La N, of Gala. <laughs> Oh no, it's, it's, it's too beautiful to focus on it. I'm over the dog. <laughs> okay, no, the thing is like, <laughs> but, oh no, it's, okay, the thing is, yeah, I, I, I feel all the things that you're saying, yeah, and I'm, 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 yeah, thank you for, to say like oh, this. But it's is true. Like way, to, way to put it. I'm very like, I don't know. I, sometimes I can't believe it. Like I, I start to remember things and it was like, oh no, we did that really that's crazy and and the the thing is like the pressure is still going even if you don't we don't have a base anymore because you know like mm -hmm. in, it was a moment when you know like everybody says like yeah we love your project but it's too i don't know something and they don't appear in the exhibition you know why you need an exhibition space if nobody is, is coming or going or, I don't know, like just making a, a public debate about the things that you are doing, you know, what is, why you need to have a space, you know, like with all the work that that implies. So we change, um, we don't have a space anymore, but we have the collection. Mm -hmm. And the collection uh, is a still, it's a contract for life. So until we are here, I think, the collection will be like with us, with Sofia and Marina and Santiago, or maybe someone else, we you know, because we are thinking now to give, to give the collection to some other people or to give the collection to a different institutions. We don't know yet, but the thing is like the collection is still going, it's still growing. And for those of you that you don't know the collection, uh, we have stored our collection in a, in a hard drive, like this one that I have here. Mm -hmm. So we have like a contract with the artist to own the the rights of reproduction of the of the artwork. You know, we don't have the piece itself. We only have the rights. So when you have only the rights, every time that you have to show the piece, you have to make it again and again and again and again. So and that allow us um, 
many important things. Like for once, we don't have like the the situation to be like thinking on how we conserve this this stuff. And uh, no, we have like the opportunity to be free from that kind of frame, main time frame. No, you we are able to to manage the the budget that we have like if we want to print something very big for mm -hmm. an exhibition that we have a lot of money we can do that but also if we have an exhibition that we don't have any money we can print it like this but it's also not only print we have like instructions or the digital files everything that you can like put in in, in a hard drive is is in the collection and we make like lists and things and start to you know to 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 make uh, to collect things that they are important for us that, that we we are like you know that, that things that that play with the collection in yeah. a way that it, it does it doesn't it's not based in in geography or in a kind of art or is or I don't know where what things you know like it's just we make the collection with feelings like feelings friends it's like um and not, not only that, mm -hmm. you know, like feeling friends and interests, you can say, like, if you are, if you, you like, you like the work of this writer, you, it can be in the collection. It doesn't have to be a visual art. It doesn't have to be a, a person who's alive, you know, like it can be anything that give you an amount of freedom that is difficult to manage yeah. because when you have uh, so much freedom, it's just so difficult to act, you know, you are like, all this freedom and you are like feeling like trapped <laughs> by freedom, <laughs> then you feel like you can do many stuff. And now I'm thinking like in this current time that you are, you can move to, to make the show happen. I can still send the files and I can Absolutely. still send the, the instruction. I can feel, I can have everything. And it's not online. It's not like uh, you can do it now in your house, like this council read, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you know, like, you need a, a, a permit for that because we have this contract with the artist. We have this um, responsibility to make the scene the best we can. So it's not like it's free. And, and, and no, it's just it's it's like a different kind of of, of free knowledge. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's also great. I mean, I don't know how you feel. I mean, there are a lot of like artists that became curators. But I feel that in your case, I mean, and I don't know if it's a chicken or the egg situation, but I feel like a lot of like, and, and also in the case of Santiago Villanueva, who is also an artist that is part of this collective that created La N. In both your cases, in very different ways, because with Santiago, it's more about like the research size of, like, of the museum as an institution. But in your case, it seems to be more about like this, like production side of museums, right? I mean, this idea of having to be like a gestor, you know, like gestión cultural that a museum entails. And I feel like a lot of your work has to do with that, you know, and, and, and even the way that you conceive this video to present your work has to do with finding a collective, which has to do with activism and militancy also. But it's also like a type of activity typical of museums, like, like museum is, the, is like a, it's a collective you know, effort necessarily. It's like filming a movie, you know, it's not like writing a book, you know, which is a solitary activity. Um, anyway, just wanted to bring that up and maybe we should go to your next video, sorry. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Yeah, I, I feel that too, like, um, to be- Oh, we're gonna be cut, heads up, so that you know, okay, like, okay. we're gonna be I cut up go... in 10 minutes because of Instagram meanness. But okay, now let's see okay, that, what is sorry. that? <laughs> This is the no, last no, no. one, the last one. Ah, it's the last video. What is that? Ah, this is my, my message for you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> for many <laughs> artists and freelance cultural workers, the coronavirus pandemic and the declaration of quarantine in many of our countries affected our emotional and financial daily life. All of the projects that I was working on for the next four or five months were postponed or canceled. I couldn't even go back to my studio. Anxiety and fear of what will happen with my family and friends in Argentina and in the rest of the world took control of my mind for several days. Little by little, I started to draw and make mobiles again, using small things and elements that I found in my house. I never wanted to wield a body of work, but to preserve this, our bodies, breathing and unaccounted for inside a work, Ocean Vong.
What? This is the end. <laughs> no, I think I ha we, we do have a few minutes and, and this has been lovely. I don't know. I feel like it's very beautiful how you started and finished, I mean, about addressing the current situation. Um, but um, I feel like, I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about like the footage that you had in the video? I think we do have a few minutes. I mean, okay. about that last video. And and you need to say who who are the voices because you've been doing that with all of them. You probably want to say. Uh, yes, yes. Sofia de Rome, the, the girl that I just mentioned before. And Natalia de la Rosa, who is an art historian from Mexico. And she's also is dealing with museums and she's it's a, it's a force of nature on that subject. And you, if you don't know her, it's your time as well. Um, Right. I can show you, actually, I can show you the pieces here because all the footage that, that is in the video, no, not the, like the, the leg or all these kind of, of nature images, but the other ones, like the mobiles, they are here in my house. It's just like something very curious because I, I, I don't have materials in my house to make art because I have a, a beautiful studio mm -hmm. in downtown. But I, I can go right now because everybody knows why. Um, so I start to like work with the things that I could find in my house and make mm -hmm. mobiles because that's the way I, I can think and process everything. So I was, I was that's just amazing. walking through my small living room that is just tiny. You know? uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, and that's quite amazing. <laughs> Miguel? Miguel? Oh, <laughs> no problem. ¿Me ayudas? Okay. Hola, I Miguel. Go, I also have... Hola, hola. I have my assistant, the Peruvian curator. Please open. <laughs> no, so I have this throw. That I, because I, I supposed to send it to somewhere and I couldn't do that so I have the drawings with me like in the magical yeah. situation to have something to show for you and this is like a drawing on another project that I didn't mention today it's a project about uh, food it's about seas and about transient trans seas so this like all the names of the most uh, infamous and horrible brands of corporation actually of seas in the world that are killing mm -hmm. everything so i'm making this opera the first time in my life that i'm making an opera so it's very wow. strange for me the first, yeah the first part I, I i made it in guatemala with the help of the amazing Edwin Alarcón. and so i made only one part it's four parts and I plan to do it when the world just returns to the normality if this start happening. So the other if one, baby. Yeah. yeah, it that happens, yeah. So in the meantime, I will show you. We should All have right. like this five, is... ten more minutes. Let's hope they don't cut us. We'll see. Well, if they cut us, it's okay. Yeah. If they yeah. cut us, so be it. We yeah. are going to still be talking art. Yeah, and you can see yeah. vertical. Ah, uh, está. And this is someone with a big carrot. Wow! As you can see now. Uh, yes, and then the other one faster than this. <laughs> this. <laughs> no, these are all the things that I could find here. And also they are very fragile because I couldn't like put nails on my, on my roof, you know, like it's a rented house. So like I have this, like, and it, it falls sometimes, like it starts to fall. <laughs> it's very fragile, like the, like the, like all heads, I think. Oh, and this is someone who have like, is digesting something. I, 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 I can't need to do this. Oh, he's eating like a 
fish or uh, something like that. And then it's, it's making all the digestive system like going very bad because the food that he's eating is like terrible. And also I have um, like very things like in my stomach as well. I have like, I don't, I make an operation in December. So that it's an important um, subject for me. Uh, and mm -hmm. the last one, please. And then you can go away. <laughs> We can go to the Q&A. I'm sure the audience has a lot of questions. Um, well, uh, well, people can write any question they may have on the comment section. I wanted to bring up, I mean, what a beautiful thing it is. Uh, I mean, thank you for sharing all this work. I think it's great that you were able to show us some real pieces and physical pieces, not only the video. And it's fantastic um, that you were also able to do this like community effort to have this uh, biography or like description of your own work or artist statement uh, mention, you know, like and explained by your colleagues and by your friends. It's a way to create a community. And then um, I also wanted to bring up like how interesting is that you, you know, you were working ab about this fine line in between reality and virtuality in these works, you know, in the transparency of the works, in these works that were supposed to be 3D, but that then ended up being like, you know, a 3D design printed in this like semi-transparent material. So I think that's a um, fun, that, that's, you know. Mm. Anyway, um, any question from anybody? I mean, I think, I think it's, it's I think, <laughs> too much. <laughs> I think that we talk too much and I think also that we might be having a lot of technical issues, but, um, okay, I think I have another one in the computer. No, I don't. Um, and, ah, what is the opera about? Okay, Sophie uh, is asking what is the opera is about? Yes. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, the opera is about um, like this, like seas and transgenic food. Like uh, it's like an agrotoxic uh, opera. Mm -hmm. It's based in in feminist uh, ecological thinking and like you know, like this so food sovereignty, sovereignty, or I don't know, and um, and all these kinds of stuff. In like it, the first chapter, we recorded in La Terminal. It's a central market in Guatemala. So imagine this, like it's the, the central market of, of, the, of the country, I think the bigger one. And there's uh, mountains and towns of fruits and, and vegetables and things and stuff and all these kind of things. And the opera is happening in, in, the, in the market. You know, there is like a mango. Mm -hmm. There is like, <laughs> um, Svin actually made the, the role of mango. So he was like with this, big uh, piñatas thing. It's like it was made from the same material of piñata. And he was walking and uh, like, you know, the toxic, like it was like almost dualism about the devil and the seas in a, in a crazy way. But it was happening all in the market. So the main audience of the opera, it, it was like the the people from the market, you know, the, the costumes, the customers and also like the the people working there. So that's interesting to, to me because it was, you know, like the audience is other kind of audience. It's not like the regular um, artists, you know, like artists talking to art, to talking to artists again and talking mm -hmm. to art history again over and over. No, it was a different kind of uh, way to relate to the audience. And so I have like recordings and sound. So the idea is to film the four chapters and then I, I can make like one long video with all this material and the sound of the of the opera is, is based on the on recordings of like protests of like food um I don't know people from from the fields you know like this um, enormous amount of uh, like fight against like these corporations and you know this kind of demonstrations again that Oh, like they are like very loud and it's like this the sound of the opera will be like really difficult to manage you know like we're gonna be like ah! mm. you know people very angry about this situation and they must they must be angry because 
everything is just like not good on that field as well. And also in Latin America, it's very difficult, you know, Monsanto, um, Bayer, every, like they are, they are like in, in every food that we have. So like for us, mm -hmm. it's an option thing, I think like to work on that. And then uh, there was another question that I, why do you think this artist is important at all? This is for me. I'm not important at all. I know that I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> no, we have. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's for you people to, to answer to yourself, right? I mean, I think so. Okay, Sophia saying thank you, Gala, and hello. The opera sounds amazing. And then Christian Samper. Uh, okay. I mean, he's asking how the audience responded to your work. There's been a lot of talk about among opera houses in the scientist they said. Yeah, she just explained some of that. Um, so anyway, I mean, I think we're going to be cut in any second anyway. So I will, I suggest we should say thank you to Gala. Thank you, Gala, for this fantastic talk. Thank you to the audience for your patience during this technological apocalypse we had on Instagram, apparently too many.